This instructional video provides an overview of the image capture options as part of the tutorial series for the Infinity Analyze microscopy software. In this tutorial we examine the various options provided for acquiring images from the camera for storage to disk or for further processing. The topics that we'll cover include Capture Options pane which includes where to save the files, how to capture full field of view, previewing your captured images, auto-incrementing file name, capturing in 16-bit mode, using the alternative exposure option, and other settings for averaging, subsampling, and pixel shifting. We'll also describe different file types available for storage, as well as using such things as keyboard shortcuts or foot switches to capture images. Capturing images is a fundamental feature of the Infinity Analyze application. We'll begin by looking at the functions provided on the Capture Options pane on the left side of the screen. These settings allow you to specify what happens each time an image is captured from the camera. We'll go through each option one by one to explain their function, providing you with the information necessary to decide which combination of these settings will give you the preferred results for your application. Let's start by looking at where the files will go each time you click one of the options to capture or acquire an image. This box here specifies whether or not files are saved directly to disk as image files, whether or not those images go into the field group, or whether they go to both simultaneously. As we've covered in other videos, the field group is an in-memory uh, holding place for images that you've captured and is accessed through this imaging control and field group option drop-down. Images need to be stored in the field group if you want to combine them or process them with some of the image processing functions. An important part of this option for saving files is to click on this button here with the three dots which opens a standard Windows Save As dialog box. So you can specify a folder name as well as type in a file name and that file name can be the prefix to which a numerical sequence is added later. The file types to choose from include Infinity Analyze's native SIF format and once again as described in previous videos the SIF file format is the only file format which can retain the calibration data along with an image so if you want to open an image later uh, and take additional measurements from it using the same calibration you must save the images in the SIF file format if you want to share images with anybody else who's not using Infinity Analyze then it's important to save images in a bitmap, JPEG, TIFF or portable network graphics format you can select whichever of these file formats that you like and images that will be saved will use this prefix or this file name. That file name path shows up here in the dialog. I'm going to jump ahead now to specify uh, what happens if you use the auto increment file name. So by enabling auto increment file name each image that you capture will have a numerical value appended to the root file name or prefix file name that you specified up above. If you do not specify to auto increment the file name then each time you click the capture button the same file name will be overwritten. However if you select auto increment file name then each image that you capture will get a sequentially numbered uh, file name um, updated. When you first install Infinity Analyze, Capture Full Field of View and Preview Captured Image are two options that are selected by default. Preview Captured Image is typically going to be enabled if you want to see the captured image appear on the screen each time you click one of the uh, capture uh, buttons. However, if you're recording a sequence of images directly to file, you may want to turn off the Preview Captured Image to save the additional processing of having to open each of those images uh, within Analyze and then manually close them afterwards. The Capture Full Field of View specifically tells Analyze that you want to capture the entire resolution from your camera whether it's a 1.5 megapixel, 2 megapixel, 3, 5 megapixel camera. The capture Full Field of View when enabled will always take the image of the entire uh, field of view. However, 
if you remove that checkbox and say change your live preview zoom scale and now click on the capture button you'll see that the image captured here is showing me just the portion of the image that was visible in my live preview whereas when I click the capture full field of view option even though my live preview is only showing a portion of the image when I click the capture button in this case I'm getting the entire field of view so that explains uh, how the capture full field of view works and I've got the preview captured image checked so therefore both of these images when I acquired them appeared on the screen verify file name on capture when enabled will just prevent you from overwriting a previously captured file so uh, if you're not using the auto increment file name or if you want to make sure that you're setting the correct uh, root file name or prefix you can specify to verify file name on capture each time capture 16-bit file format this will pop up a dialog forcing me to select the TIFF output as the file type and I can specify my image file name uh, here for 16-bit um, mode and it will save it always in a TIFF file format the reason for that is the TIFF file format is the only one that can support the 10, 12, or 14-bit output from the different camera models that we have. Under certain application conditions, uh, you can get enough light for your bright field images, but when you capture an image uh, after focusing it on the live preview, you may want to switch to a fluorescent lamp and you may want to do a longer exposure. So selecting this Use Alternate Exposure checkbox and putting in a value in milliseconds that you want. So 3,000 milliseconds will give you a three-second exposure. So now each time I click the Capture button, I'm going to get an exposure time that uh, would be three seconds long if that's what I've specified as my alternate exposure. Up at the top of the Capture Options dialog box, I've got a few rows of radio buttons. Averaging uh, allows you to capture an image that's based on a 1, 2, 4, or 8 frame average. If you have a somewhat noisy um, imaging environment, uh, high gain or longer exposure, and you want to reduce some of the background noise in that image, uh, some of the random noise can be averaged out by selecting an average frame. And by averaging two frames, four or eight frames together, you'll get a different result. Subsampling is available on many of the uh, CMOS cameras. You can do subsampling by one, two, three, or four. And if you're using an Infinity X32 camera or the older X21 camera, the software will detect that and this box will change to pixel shifting. So this will be where you would select whether or not you're collecting a single resolution image from the chip or if you're using pixel shifting two times in X and Y, three times in X and Y, or four times in the X and Y direction. So that covers most of the options available, most of the camera settings and application settings for the Capture Options panel. And lastly, in today's tutorial, I want to talk about different ways of capturing images. So on the control panel on the left-hand side, the most prominent button is this capture button here. Clicking the capture button will give me an image on screen. Also, if you have the toolbars turned on, you have a capture button up here where you also see from the tooltip that it says control G. So if I go back to my live preview image and execute a control G, then I get an image being saved. Also from the file menu, I have my capture uh, option on my drop-down list and that will capture an image as well. And you can also move your mouse and double left mouse click on the live preview image and get a captured image. The control G function which is listed here and showed up as a tooltip is important if you wanted to use your macros in conjunction with uh, a foot switch. A programmable foot switch allows you typically to program a sequence of keyboard functions so knowing that the control G will do uh, the capture for you is important if you have a multi-button foot switch you can also program in things like uh, auto exposure with a control E 
or control W for a white balance. So that wraps things up for the video tutorial on capture options. Be sure to check out our other video tutorials in this series for more information on the Infinity Analyze application.